Hi, welcome back to CVE and 305. We are talking about uh, axial loading. So let us uh, kind of continue with our core ideas. Um, today we are going to talk about linear response of bars under axial load. We need to have some idea of how these bars respond, what happens to them and so on. So what we have is the following. The example problem is the following. I have a bar of length L and cross sectional area A which is up to the bottom of which there is an applied force F. And our assumption is that F is much 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 larger than the weight. This is generally true for uh, bars made of steel and things like that. We are applying actually much larger forces than the weight of the bar. So we are not really concerned about the weight of the bar all that much. Uh, we are primarily interested in uh, what happens to this thing. So as a result of this, what will happen is that the bar will become longer. So actually two things happen. bar becomes longer and generally thinner. So if you pull the bar, it will become longer and thinner. Okay. So um, in fact, uh, if you look at the video that goes with this, you will see that clearly the bar if I take a rubber band and I pull it, it will become thinner. I will show you in a second. Uh, I mean, you can go look at the video uh, and you will see that. Uh, so this is what happens. Okay. So we want to quantify this behavior. In such a way that the results can be used for a similar bar of some other cross section and length. So we need we have discussed this, but anyway, I will write it down so that it's clear to us. We need two observations. Typically speaking, to get the same extension. By the way, by extension, I mean this thing. In most, most books, it's called delta. It's not a convenient uh, thing because we're also going to use delta for derivatives and things like that and variations and all kinds of things. So it is better to, in many times, it is better to use u for deflections. That's an easier thing to do. So I will tend to use u, but the book will use delta and you have to be able to switch between the two things. Okay, typically to get the same extension, what we want to do of a, for the bar of the same length but different area the applied force.
must be scale with tail. That is what I mean by scale with the area. If I double the if I double the cross sectional area but keep the length the same, the uh, the force must be double if you want to get the same extension. If I half the area, the force must be half. By the way, this is true until you get to very small dimensions. Then all kinds of funny things happen. So if you have if you have typical macroscopic bars, it's fine. But if you get to really really tiny bars, this is not the case. Okay. So that's item one. one. Item two. <clears throat> for the same cross section if you apply the same force the extension will increase linearly with length so a bar twice as long will extend by twice as much by the way twice is written as 2x like in magnification and things like that in cameras and things like that so extension twice as much provided same cross section and same force so what this means is that if I want to be able to compare bars, 